531, 531. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Let's all stand together as we sing 531 together. On that first. All hail the power of Jesus' name. singing this morning what a day that'll be won't it and uh just picture that sometimes in your mind and uh what a time that'll be maybe today uh maybe it'll be today we'll hear the trumpet sound and we'll go home uh to be with the lord and uh if i ever want to be sure i was saved i want to be sure i'm saved today amen and uh don't wait until it's too late good to see you in church this morning uh thanks for being here today let's open with a word of prayer shall we Father, we thank you for another opportunity for us to be together here in the house of God. Thank you for each one who's made the effort uh, to come and to be in church today. Lord, we bow before you here at the beginning of the service, and we ask you to meet with us. And Lord, you promise that when we gather together, there you'll be in the midst. And we claim that promise this morning. Yet we'd ask, Lord, for the added blessing, the added pleasure to feel your presence in this place. And so, Lord, we pray that you'll your hand would be upon the music this morning uh, every special every congregational song uh, offertory that it would be for your glory and for your honor that christ would be exalted in all we do this morning honor the preaching of the word of god <coughs> draw us closer to you because we were here this morning in jesus name we ask it amen, amen. okay you may be seated
Let's turn over to 268, 268. I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross he suffered from the curse to set me free. 268. I will sing of my Redeemer. few announcements for us now. Listen carefully if you would. Regular schedule today, 5.30 for our Christian growth class, and we're going to talk tonight about the subject of sin, all right? Uh, not much is called sin in these days, but the Bible hasn't changed, and uh, every, you'll find, once you get saved, listen, your, your days of sinning aren't over, but your days of enjoying sin are over, and uh, you won't enjoy it anymore. And you're going to find the ways to get victory over that sin. And we'll talk about that this evening. All right. So uh, that's 530 Christian growth class, 630 for their evening service right back here in the auditorium. And that'll uh, tonight, Lord willing, I'm going to talk about I'll do my part. I'll do my part. If you're curious about what your part is, you better be here to find out. And uh, or else we'll have to tell you later about it. But uh, I'll do my part. 630 night. Now, we have a couple sign up sheets downstairs. Uh, one is to help if you'd like to help in any way during our missions conference coming up. Uh, I was adding it up 56 days away. We start the missions conference. And so coming up quickly. And um, if you want to help in any capacity with that, uh, sign up down there. There's information there. Just follow the the information on the page and we'll be in contact with you and also uh, we have a float in the parade uh, the arts in the alley parade that falls on the Saturday during the missions conference and um, we'll be putting together by the way in August 
uh, at least 5,000 John and Romans uh, right here. <coughs> Brother Phil Taylor and his wife are bringing the material up here. We'll assemble them right here, the ones we'll give away in September. Won't that be cool? And uh, we'll get to do that, and uh, that'll be on uh, August 15, 16, and 17. And uh, each evening, all right, so make sure you make a note of that. Put that on your calendar. Uh, we want to have a good group out for that uh, each night. That'll be an exciting time. We should be able to get them done Monday night and Tuesday night, and Wednesday will be the dedication of those uh, John and Romans, okay? And uh, so if you want to help with the float that we'll put in that parade, uh, getting it ready and decorations and all that uh, kind of thing, you sign up down there as well, and we're glad to, help, help, uh, glad to have you help us with that, okay? All right. Let's take a moment. We'll welcome our guests that are with us in the service today. If anybody here today for the very first time, would you slip your hand up? We can find out. Uh, got somebody on the back row right here. Vicki, introduce this fellow to us, will you please? Fantastic. Larry, good to see you this morning. God bless you. Uh, Vicki is the lady we prayed over Wednesday night. And uh, doctor, had, she's had leukemia for about a year. And um, they called her Friday to say that she is absolutely clear of cancer. And um, she goes Tuesday for some more. Uh, to, goes in Tuesday to see the doctor, and I think it's Tuesday, isn't it, for an appointment. And uh, the doctor said in 40 years of oncology, she's never seen anything like it. And uh, praise God. We ask that uh, the doctors would be confounded, and uh, they just, listen, you have, just have to give God the glory. And uh, praise the Lord. It's good to have Larry with us this morning. And uh, not her first time here, but first time in a long time, Tammy, right down here. This is Tammy right there. And uh, good to have her visiting this morning. And uh, good, glad she's with us in the service. Okay. Anybody else this morning? Good to see Anya's back. Good to see Anya. And James is here. Good to see James. Good. Okay. All right. If you'll take just a minute and fill the card out, we appreciate you doing that. In a little bit, we have the offering, and just drop that card in the plate if you would, and uh, appreciate you being here as our guest today. Someone said they saw Brett Linky here. Is Brett here? Yeah. Brett and Lisa, where are they? What are they doing down there? Linky, get in here. <laughs> it was Saturday night. You probably took a bath last night. Saturday night special. Got to bring him in here. Ezekiel making his debut at church. Got to have him come up here. Ezekiel, let's see, I think it was July 11th, wasn't it? Are they coming? Make room. Hey, guys in the back, that's not just for anybody to sit in. That's for these latecomers to sit in. You guys ought to sit up in the, in the regular seats, all right? There he is. There's Lisa. All right. <laughs> Amen. Great to see Ezekiel here. Good to see you two here. Good. Uh, how's, how's the sleep coming? <laughs> Sleep's overrated, huh? All right. Well, what a what a precious little guy. And uh, that's great. Good to have you in church today. Amen. That's wonderful. All right. Let's take a minute and hear from our choir.
413, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, but then love lifted me. 413, we're going to sing that first and last together. 413. On that first, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves he's a master of the sea billows his will obey he your savior wants to be be safe today love lifted me love lifted me when nothing else could help love lifted me love lifted me Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Amen. Great singing this morning. Let's go over to 275, if you would. 275, one peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like sea billows roll. Let's all stand as we sing. It is well. It is well with my soul. As we sing this first verse, children want you to be dismissed to junior church. Children, you're dismissed to junior church. On that first, when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever. Amen. Greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing those last stanzas together.
It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Let's sing this third verse together as you find your seats. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. On that third together, my sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh, my soul, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, and Lord, haste the day when the face shall be sight, <coughs> the clouds as a scroll, the trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend, even so it is. said amen great singing be seated if you will and uh ready to take the offering this morning give us the lord as blessed and prospered you i still don't have all of our estimates in as far as carpeting and lighting and such i i got a feeling it's going to be in the neighborhood of ten thousand dollars and uh but that's uh where we're i think we're looking at this to get all these lights changed over in here and um We'll get rid of the boxes, by the way. It'll all be recess lights uh, in the ceiling, and then and there'll be the LED lights, which is much uh, much more economical uh, to run. The same thing out in the fellowship hall uh, with those lights, and then, of course, uh, get some carpeting in here that uh, isn't frayed and uh, looking a little rough, and so we'll look forward to that. That'll be two weeks from today, August the 7th, a special offering for those projects, and so I pray what the Lord would have you to do on that. And uh, we'll trust God to take care of that need. Amen. Amen. And uh, give today as God has blessed and prospered you. And we'll pray for our offering this morning. And uh, Brother Chuck, lead us in our prayer, please. Let's pray. Father, we come before you again today, Lord, and just want to give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord, for loving us the way you do. Taking care of us, Lord, meeting our needs. Lord, thank you for your great salvation. Lord, I just pray that the offering be pleasing to you today, Father. May we give, Lord, as you have blessed us. Lord, help us to use the finances wisely. Speak to our hearts now as we hear your word today. We will give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Please take your Bible this morning for our scripture reading, if you would please, to Colossians chapter 3. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 3, please. We're going to read verses 15, 16, and 17. We'll read 15 together. I'll read verse 16, then we'll end together reading verse 17. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture. <clears throat> All of us standing to read God's word. And let's begin together on verse 15 of Colossians chapter 3. Ready? And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing, please, to the reading of our scripture here this morning. <clears throat> and Father, I pray that you would continue to prepare our hearts and make us ready to hear what the Spirit would say to its church this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your word, and thank you for allowing us to hold copies of it in our hand this morning. And I pray that each of us would ask you, as we listen to the special this morning, to minister to our heart, to give us each what you know that we need. For you know what we need better than we know what we need. And Lord, I pray that once again, through the Spirit of God, using the Word of God, you would minister to the people of God. So bless the special, Lord, to prepare us. And Lord, may we all be ready to hear what you want to say to each of us this morning. And I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, okay, before I sing the song, I asked Pastor if I could give a short testimony. Um... I had the amazing opportunity to be raised in a very, very strong Christian home. And I literally cannot remember a time my family was not in church, ever, um, or in some sort of church ministry. Um, on a Wednesday night in October, when I was seven years old, I asked the Lord to save me. It was, I understood, I decided it was time, and I asked him to be my savior. And when someone gets saved at a young age like that, it's easy for us to think, when we hear someone else's testimony, they've gone through all this stuff, they got saved in their late teens, 20s, 30s, later in life, it's easy for us to think that our testimony is somehow inferior to that because we didn't have this amazing, earth-shattering, life-changing experience that this other person had. It was simple for us. And it's easy to say, you know, I wasn't saved from that like they were, but I was. I didn't struggle with the past like some people did, but I could have. I don't struggle with memories of my past or with um, a broken home or with anything like that, but I could have. God may not have saved me from a past of what I have been, but he has saved me from a life of what I might have been. And this song, somebody in the church gave it to me, and it touched me very much, and I would like to share it with you. I felt sometimes I didn't have a story I could share. I wasn't rescued from a past destroyed by dark despair. But Jesus, I have memories of the times that we've been through. And I wouldn't trade one moment of growing up with you. I came to, came to know you early, came to know you young. You touched my heart, dear Jesus, when my life had just begun. I gave you my tomorrows and a childish heart of sin, and you saved me from a lifetime of what I might have been. You filled some days with laughter, you helped me when I cried. You said, child, you can do anything, I will help me when I 
I tried. Now I treasure every memory, and I'm sure there couldn't be a child who could have known more love than you have given me. I remember how you touched me, but I can't explain it all. How a choice that's so important could be made by one so small. I just bring to you my questions and what you've said to me I've done. And I thank you for the blessings of coming to you young. I came to know you early, came to know you young. You touched my heart, dear Jesus, when my life had just begun. I gave you my tomorrows and a childish heart of sin. And you saved me from a lifetime of what I might have been. Yes, you saved me from a lifetime of what I might have been. Catherine, thank you. Father, we thank you now for this morning, and thank you, Lord, for the good testimony that we just heard. Thank you, Father, that uh, there are those in this room that you have saved out of a life of sin, and others in this room who you have saved from ever being in a life of sin. And Lord, either way, you're a great Savior, and it's a great salvation. <clears throat> and I pray, Lord, you'd help us this morning now as we look into the only book you've ever written. And I pray that each of us would give our careful attention to your word today and to the truth that we'll look at that the Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, gave to the church in Colossae. And Lord, help us to grasp it this morning. And Lord, I pray that we'd understand what it means to have Christ living in us and living through us. So help me as I bring the message, and please help each individual as they listen. Minister to each of your people as only you can today, God. And I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 3 of Colossians, if you have your Bible open there, Paul is giving this church some very important instruction. <clears throat> this is not a baby church. This is a mature church. This is a church, this is a group of people that's able to have some... Uh, meet, uh, some, uh, they're able to handle uh, the, the, the stronger things of the Word of God. And he's, he's reminding them in the first few verses that Christ is our life. Once you receive Him as your Savior, Jesus Christ, you become a new creature in Him. You are not only in Christ, but you find out Christ is in you. And uh, He desires to live His life through you. You're not just adding Christ into your life. That's, that's a false notion of Christianity. The Bible, Christianity, is where Christ is our life. He is living through us. That's what verse 4 says. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with Him in glory. Then He tells them, you have to uh, die to some things. That's what mortify means in verse 5. And then, and then you're also going to have to put off some things. Verse number 8. Uh, sometimes, listen, oftentimes people look for Christianity and they say, well, I want to be spiritual or I want to know God. What do I have to do? And what they look for is a list of things to do. Because we kind of like to be able to check off the list and say, okay, because I do all these things, I'm good. But the, the problem is, God doesn't give, there, there is no list to make you spiritual. Is this on? There, there is no list to make you spiritual. It is, it is Christ in you. Now, if you want a list, try this list on for size, okay? Try putting off, verse 8, anger, wrath, 
malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another. You put off the old man with his deeds. Now, putting off all that, say, okay, I'm not going to lie anymore. I'm not going to steal anymore. Uh, I'm not going to uh, have anger. I'm not going to have wrath. I'm not going to have malice. I'm not going to have filthy communication come out of my mouth. I'm not going to do any of those things. And guess what? You still wouldn't be spiritual. Nobody's spiritual by what they don't do. Okay? So God says here, you're putting those off. Why? Because i got some things I want you to put on. And that goes into verse number 10. And having put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him, where there's neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against you, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness, the bond of maturity. So God says, if you want to try a list, how about this list? Have you put on, as a Christian, as one who knows Christ, bowels of mercies? Have you, have you been merciful? Compassionate? Have you put on kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness? You see, God says, I'm not just telling you to put off the old things. You put those off so you can put on the new man. So you can put on the new things. But just so, so it's not what you don't do, but it's what you are doing. And listen, you don't do it. This doesn't happen by trying harder. It happens by yielding. To Jesus Christ. Yielding to Him. It's, I want to talk to you about Christ living in me. Christ who is our life. What does that look like? How can I know if I've put off and put on? How can I know if I've done that or if I'm, I'm getting that accomplished in my life? Well, the greatest thing about the Bible is that the best commentary on the Bible is the Bible. Okay, So if you don't understand something or want further insight on something, usually the answer is this. Keep reading. Okay, And the Bible will give you the explanation. Now as we look at this and we see how do I know whether this is really taking place or not, he says in verse number 15, here's the first way you'll know. You let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which also ye are one, called in one body and be ye thankful. How do I know if Christ, if I'm yielded to Him, if I put off the old things and put on the new man, if Christ is truly living in me and through me, then you'll know, number one, because you're letting the peace of God rule in your heart. The peace of God will rule in your heart, so the peace of Christ. Now, the rule here, the word rule means uh, uh, makes the calls. Okay, It's kind of like the, the referee, you know, they used to have, I don't think they have it anymore, they used to have in the, uh, commercials of NFL games. They had this little thing that said, you make the call. And they would have a certain play in a football game. And then, you know, was this, you know, what would you call here? Was that interference? Was it not interference? Was it offsides? Was it not offsides? You make the call. And you'd have to be the referee or the umpire. So here he's saying that, that, that it's the peace of Christ. Notice, let the peace of God rule in your heart to which you're also called in one body. So the peace of God makes the rules, it makes the call in my life. So I want to follow, listen, let me ask you this. Have you ever done something and had an uneasiness in your heart about it? Hmm? You just didn't. If someone said, do you have a real calm and peace about this? Your answer would have been, huh, no. No. Don't have that at all. Think about, think about the example of Jesus Christ. They're yelling, crucify him, crucify him. The soldiers have arrested him. The soldiers are, have beaten him. Witnesses have come forward and lied about him. 
said things about him that just out, flat out weren't true. Soldiers have put in a bag over his head and have hit him with their fist. Said, prophesy, who hit you? They scourged him with the cat of nine tails. They mock him. They put the crown, push it down of thorns upon his head where the blood comes out. And they, they mock him saying, there's your king, king of the Jews. And through all of that, and the crowd mocked him, and even on the cross as they mocked him and said, yeah, you saved others, but you can't save yourself. But through all of that, Jesus, the Bible says, never uttered a word. How could he not do that? You look at that and you think, man, we get, hey, we get agitated a whole lot less than that, and we speak up. How can Jesus not do that? Peace. The peace of God within his heart. He's at peace. The Bible says we're to follow the things that make for peace. That, that having that, that, that calmness in our spirit. Notice how it ties it in with this. Let the peace of God rule in your heart to the which ye also called in one body and be ye thankful. Saying now, uh, the, the, the peace of God makes the call in your heart. And he says, and, and, and I want to remind you, you've been called into one body. The, that's what the church is referred to, is body. Remember, we're all members of the same body. Okay? So, so when it comes to your, your interaction in the body of Christ, what's the rule of your heart? Your emotions? I can't believe she said that to me. I can't believe he talked to me that way. Well, then we're letting the emotions of our heart rule, but not the peace of God rule in our heart. Boy, that's quiet. See, the peace of God in our interactions in the body is the rule, not our emotion, not our feelings, not what we think, what we want, what we feel. The peace of God. The peace of God. What makes for peace. And it says, be ye what? Thankful. Hey, I'm thankful I'm part of a church. You see? And the way, way you do that is if you have to let the peace of God rule in your heart. How many times have I, you've seen people, they've been disgruntled, or maybe it's happened to you, or you've known somebody, and they start getting, you start getting disgruntled in a church, and they see everything that's wrong, and, and they end up saying, well, that's the straw that, What were you collecting straws for? Why were you doing that? You see? Because, because you weren't allowing the peace of God to rule in your heart. And you weren't realizing I've been called to the body of Christ, to the church, and I need to be thankful for what God has called me to do. And you won't be thankful until you realize what you've been called to, and you can't do any of that until you let the peace of God call the shots. Make the calls, not yourself, and not your feelings, not your emotions. You say, what does, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let the peace of God make that call. He's, Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. So when Jesus comes in, he's really saying, let him rule your heart. Because he's the Prince of Peace. The announcement the angels made, they said, or the angels said, Glory to God in the highest, on earth, comma, peace, goodwill toward men. Why? Because on earth, peace with a capital P. We just say peace on earth. No, no, no. He's, he's not just talking about peace on earth, he's talking about peace, a person. The Prince of Peace was on earth. That's what the angels were announcing. And when the Prince of Peace, how, listen, how can, can I get, get angry and get upset and have, uh, have, have ought against another and ought against a brother and ought against a sister? How can I have all that and say the Prince of Peace is ruling in my heart? See, I can't do that. 
So if I, if I first, first thing, out of the gate, so if you want to know if you're put off and put on the right thing, if you want to know that Christ is living in you, you have to let the peace of Christ rule in your heart. It has to call the shots, okay? Then he goes to the second thing, verse number 16. He says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Notice what it says about the Word of Christ, where it has to be. It has to dwell in you richly in all wisdom. It has to dwell in your heart, my friend. And it dwells in you richly in all wisdom. Dwell means you take up residence. Dwell means that's where you live. It's your dwelling place. Not a guest, not a visitor, but a permanent resident house. You know what it literally means? To have the run of the house. We were... It was interesting. Um, we had some folks over to the house, and um, they were talking about their children. And uh, one of them talked about how even their uh, little girl likes to just go through the house. I mean, you invite them over to your house, she kind of feels like she ought to check every room out. Hmm? I mean, you know, when you have somebody over to your house, you don't necessarily mean uh, you're not going to sort of give them a tour of the whole house. Are you with me, ladies? Are you here? Yeah, all right. You say, no, you'd be this room, this room, this room. We don't go back there, okay? And uh, why? There's some things that, you know what? You're the guest, you're the visitor, and you don't go walking through somebody's house, okay? Uh, that's, those are areas that, that you, just, you just don't go. Now, if you live there, that's a different story, right? If you live there, you have access to the whole house. You can go anywhere you want. And, and, and here he's saying, let the word of Christ dwell, live, have the run, of your whole house. Let it have complete control. Many people can quote the Bible, but they don't read the Bible. Many people can praise the Bible, but they never study the Bible. Let me ask you a question. Are you at home with the Bible? Are you at home with the Bible? Or is you, are, are you as unfamiliar looking for things in the Bible as you would be looking for something in a home that didn't belong to you? If you ask me, if you were at my house said, you have a pair of scissors? I'd know right where to go to get you a pair of scissors. If you said, uh, do you have any duct tape? I'd know right where to go to get you duct tape. If you know, uh, you have WD-40, I know right where to go to get you WD-40. Because that's the only tools I use. <laughs> if it moves and shouldn't, I duct tape it. If it doesn't move and should, I hit WD-40 and that's about it. But I'm saying, I know where that stuff is, but if I was at your house and you said, hey, I need this, I would say, man, I don't know where they keep that. I have no idea. It's not my house. I don't live here. You know why? Do you live there? Are you at home with the Bible? Do you know where the Ten Commandments are found? Would you know to go to Exodus 20 or Deuteronomy 5? You know, somebody talks about the story of Joseph. Would you know to start in Genesis 37? Basically go Genesis 37 to 50. Do you know? Do you know if someone says, well, what about that uh, Philip getting an Ethiopian eunuch saved? Would you know that's Acts chapter 8? When the Philippian jailer got saved, would you know to go to Acts 16? If somebody said, where's that Bible say so you have to be born again? Would you know to go to John chapter 3? You know, are, how, how, how familiar you are, how at home are you with the Bible? You ought to know the Bible. You know, someone said you can read the Bible out loud in 72 hours. That's 15 minutes a day, and you'd read the Bible through in a year. Now, tell me again your excuse for why you can't read the Bible. Tell me again your reason about why you don't know God's Word. 15 minutes a day, and you'd read it through in once a year. I won't have you raise your hand, but there's many Christians who've never read the Bible all the way through. You're going to get to heaven and uh, Haggai and Nahum's going to come up and talk to you and you're going to say, who are you? And you'll hang your head in shame. It's the, notice what it says. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Richly is abundantly. Richly is, is overflowing. 
It's fully. And so the Bible says, it, God says, listen, it's the word of Christ is to dwell in you. But then it says, secondly, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We're to be teaching and admonishing one another. That means we not only dwell in the word of God, but we declare the word of God. We declare it to others. When we gather, we teach, and we and that's, that's teaching. That's instructing people in the Bible. Admonishing is warning them or cautioning them. Teaching is where we communicate the truth, and the admonishing is where we apply the truth. I tell you what, what I, I'm not real fond of. I'm not real fond when people pray, Lord, help us to apply the message to our lives. You know, you shouldn't have to ask God to help you do that. That's part of the preacher's job. I'm going to apply the message to your life. That's what the pastor's supposed to do. That's what the preacher's supposed to do. Is the Word of God, I'm not just going to instruct you and then you do the best you can with it. There's supposed to be application in every message. You boy, y'all looking at me like... Huh? It's true. Here's the Scripture, and here's how it works. Here's the Scripture, here's what it means to us. That's the right kind of preaching. I wouldn't just hand you a gun and say, here's a gun, go have fun. They don't do that, do they? What do they do? You get instruction. Before you get a concealed carry, you have to go through so many hours of class and instruction and so many hours shooting it and uh, taking it apart and putting it together and you understand how to handle a gun. And so we come together and we help one another by teaching the Word of God and by admonishing each other with the Word of God. That's, that's, you don't just come together to catch up on the latest. You don't just come together to church just to, to have a good time. Coming together to teach and to admonish one another. That's part of the process that, that's supposed to happen when we gather together for church. And this is the, listen, it's the Word of God. This is what, this is what fashions us into being like Christ. If you don't want to be like Christ, stay away from His Word. It's interesting, the, the exact same thing is said in Ephesians about speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And you know what follows there? What, what preceded that verse was, don't be drunk with wine where is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit and letting the Word of Christ dwell in me richly produces the same result. Because you're not going to be filled with the Spirit without the Word of God. And you're not going to be filled with the Word of God without being filled with the Spirit. Because the words, Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. You won't separate the two. Don't tell me about your fullness of the Spirit experience when you neglect the Bible. Not interested. Not interested in hearing it. The tool by which he uses is the Word of God. Use the Bible on a sharp, critical tongue. Use the Bible on a negative attitude. Use the Bible on a bad temper or a short fuse. Use the Bible on lust and greed and jealousy. Whenever Jesus was tempted and Satan came to tempt him, Jesus simply said, it is written. What do you use? God's Word. God's Word. We, the Word dwells in our heart richly. The Word is to, be demonstra is, is to be declared by us. And then thirdly, it's demonstrated by us. And the way it's demonstrated by us, the Bible says, is in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Psalms, of course, were the Old Testament Psalms, it's the hymn book of Israel. The hymns are songs that give direct praise to God or glory to God. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown Him Lord of all. That's a hymn. We're giving all glory and majesty to God. Psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Are, spiritual songs are songs that are based on scriptural principles. Maybe they're testimonials. What she sang today for a special would be a spiritual song. About 
uh, getting saved and said what you saved me from and she, she's giving a testimony to God of what God has done for her. See, how do I know if God's word is dwelling in my heart? How do I know if he's dwelling in me richly? How do I know if, I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, if the word of God is at home with me? Tell me what you sing about. You tell me what you sing about, I'll tell you what's in your heart. There's three books that are vital to every Christian. God's book, your pocketbook, and the hymn book. And the hymn book. I, I, never, I never cease to be moved when we sing it is well with my soul. That, that song never, I, I can't tell you. Uh, Catherine said she doesn't remember a day that she went in church. I don't remember a time I haven't been in church. I'm just a couple years older than she is. Hmm? I don't know, Brother Taylor, I don't know how many thousands of times I've sung it as well with my soul. And it still stirs my soul. I mean, just the fact, I mean, when, when you get to stand so far, and Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The Lord shall descend. Whew. What a day that'll be. And that just, man, if that doesn't do something for you, something's wrong with you. You need help. Oh, how marvelous. Oh, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. You demonstrate the word by singing with melody in your heart. It doesn't, doesn't mean you're going to hit all the right notes. It's not the, that's not the issue. You know, I, I think, that, by the way, you demonstrate that when we have a song service in church by singing. That's a, hey, how many of you, just, just let me ask you, how many of you have ever been blessed by looking in church at someone else and seeing them sing? Ever been blessed by that? Look at that. I won't ask you to raise your hand, but how many ever looked around at people and someone during the song service and everybody's singing and they're standing there? And you wondered, wonder what's wrong with them? There's a song, We're Marching to Zion, and I think the third verse of that song says, Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. Let those refuse to sing who never knew our God. The children of the heavenly king, well, how's that go, Bob? Shout their something abroad. Shout their songs abroad. Huh? I don't want to be identified with the crowd who never knew God. But I'm going to sing. I don't care if I'm singing watermelon. I'm going to sing something. I'm going to open up and let her fly. I want to be associated with the right crowd. I want anybody to think that I don't love God. Maybe I don't hit all the right notes, but I'm going to let her fly. Because it's grace in your heart to the Lord. You're not singing for other people, but other people be blessed because you're singing for God. The peace of Christ ruling in my heart. The word of Christ dwelling in my life. And then look at verse 17, will you? And whatsoever ye do in word or deed... Do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Do all in the name of Christ. Notice, whatsoever ye do. Whosoever means anybody, right? Whosoever means anyone. Whatsoever means everything. Every, everything we do. Eating, drinking, driving, 
working, playing, recreation, entertainment, relationships. Do all in the name of Christ. We carry that name with us as Christians. We're followers of Jesus Christ. When we carry that name, that brings responsibility. You've heard me say how many times I going away as a teenager, whether it's the basketball game or going out and uh, doing something in my high school years, how many times my dad would, I'd leave the door and the last thing he'd say is, remember who you are. I was not in danger of forgetting my name. What he was reminding me of is you carry the name of Slaybaugh and my father and, and, and myself have worked for many years to make that a good name in this community. Don't you mess it up. I understood all that just by him saying, remember who you are. The story is told of Gordon Maxwell, who's a missionary to India. He went and asked a Hindu scholar to teach him the language. The Hindu said, no, sir, I will not teach you my language, for you would make me a Christian. And Gordon Maxwell said, no, you, you misunderstand me. I'm simply asking you to teach me your language. And he said, no, sir, I will not teach you because no man can live with you and not become a Christian. Wow. What a testimony that was. Would to God that be true for all of us. Don't you, don't, wouldn't you like to have that kind of influence on other people? The name of Christ needs to live in us. To be evident in our lives. Hudson Taylor said this, If your father and mother, your sister or brother, or if the very dog and cat in your house are not happier for you being a Christian, it's a question whether you really are. Did you catch that? Wow. Pretty convicting. So the point is simply this, if Christ is living in us, then the people around us ought to be blessed. I thought, as I was thinking about this, I thought of Brother Fred, your testimony of how when he got saved. Because I, I was, Brother Yoder, it kind of it blew my mind because when I asked Fred when he got saved, he, he wasn't exactly sure. I thought, well, that can't be right. Well, who led you to the Lord? He said, nobody. Well, he said, somebody helped me. Helped you to the Lord. What was that about? Well, he told me how a guy challenged him to read Romans. I think for a month he read Romans every night. Come back to work, got at work, and he'd ask him questions, and he'd answer them, and Fred would go back and read some more. And after he spent a month in Romans, and he knew he was a sinner condemned to hell, the guy said, now you can read John. And by Fred's testimony, he said he started reading the Gospel of John every night and would ask questions, and the guy would answer, and he'd go back home and read some more. And he said this. He said, I can't say, am I right, Fred? You, you correct me if I'm wrong, okay? You just jump right in here. I know you like pizza, but just jump in here. <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, I can't tell you exactly where, reading John, that I got saved. He said, but my life changed. My wife saw it. My kids saw it. And he even made the statement, if I remember right, that he even started treating the dog or the cat better or something like that. He said, I even, I even started loving the animals. Because he's just mean to everybody. Is that pretty accurate? He just changed. Sherry, did you see a change in him? Yeah. yeah. All of a sudden they say, man, something happened to this guy. Well, see, Christ changes you. He changes you. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Changes you. A preacher had a stray dog come to his house. And his three young boys were very fond of that dog. Several weeks went by and nobody came looking for the dog and they thought they were just going to be able to keep it when they saw an ad in the paper about a lost dog. And the, especially, the ad mentioned 
three white hairs in the tail of the dog. And unmistakably, it had to be that dog. But in the presence of his three boys, they watched as that preacher isolated those three hairs in the tail of that dog and removed them. The owner came to claim the dog and the dog showed every sign of recognition that this was his owner and that he knew him. But then the preacher said, wait a minute, didn't you say that your dog had three white hairs in the tail? Well, look here. It's obvious there's no white hair there. The preacher told the story and he said, we kept the dog, but I lost my three sons. They no longer had any confidence in what their father believed and in the Christianity that their father said he possessed. Listen, Mom and Dad, practice what you preach. Practice what you preach. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. If, if what you're viewing isn't fit, for your children to watch. It's not fit for you to watch. Four of us believe that anyway. Does the word of Christ dwell with you? Does a piece of Christ rule in your heart? Do you take the name of Christ everywhere you go? Do you do all in the name of the Lord Jesus? No matter what you do, listen, at the job, do you just work when you think somebody's watching you? Do you just do a good job if you think someone's looking over your shoulder? Or do you do your job every day of the week because you're doing it as under the Lord? It doesn't matter who's there or not there. You're doing it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Several years ago, I don't remember the year it was, we were... Uh, probably visiting Kathy's brother down in North Carolina. And they're about two hours from Charlotte. And we went down to Charlotte to visit the uh, Billy Graham Library and Museum. It's, it's a 40,000 square foot building, about $27 million, I think. And it, it takes them from the farm, as a farm boy, I remember they even had a cow there, you know, and, uh, and all the way through to the, big crusades and all over the world and the places that he'd been and uh, it's, it's very impressive the college years and the evangelist, his wife and uh, different, different dignitaries he met through the years and the great crusades from Los Angeles to uh, places in Europe and around the world and Franklin Graham said my, my father's over 90 years old and he still wants to preach but his body's just worn out he said, I hope this library can be an extension of his life. I hope it can be of use long after he's in heaven. And here's what Billy Graham said. He said, I've been here at the library one time. And I have one comment to make. It's too much Billy Graham. He said, my whole life has been to please the Lord and honor Jesus not to see me and people think of me. That's the attitude we all ought to have. That's the attitude we all ought to be about. Our own lives. That Christ would be seen, not us. Not us. It's not about us. It is about Him. How do I know? How do I know whether Christ, I'm allowing Him to live through me? The peace of Christ, the peace of God rules in my heart. The Word of God will dwell in me richly. It'll dwell in me, I'll declare it, and I'll demonstrate it. And then the name of Christ. Everything I do will be in His name. Everything I do will be in mindful of the fact I'm a Christian. And I want Christ to be honored. I want Him to be glorified. I want Him to look good. I don't want to bring reproach to his name. That's how you know that Christ lives in you. Let's pray, shall we? Father.
take the truth here this morning. And I pray, Lord, that you would help each of us to yield ourselves to Jesus Christ. That you truly would live in us and be seen in us. Lord, forgive us for how often we allow the flesh to take over. We get to thinking it's all about us. What we want, what we think, what we feel. And the peace of God has nothing to do with our life. And the Word of God is often neglected. We're strangers to it. We're, we're like a visitor to the Bible instead of dwelling with the Bible and giving it the run of the house. And Lord, we don't remember that we carry your name. We're Christians. And help us in whatever we do. Not just going to church on Sunday, but the other six days of the week that we do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. For your honor and for your glory. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. I'll finish the prayer in just a moment. I wonder, I wonder how many folks here this morning would say, Pastor, there was a time in my life when I knew I was a sinner and I knew I needed a Savior. And I heard that Jesus was the Savior I needed, that He died for my sins, He was buried, He rose again the third day. That if I'd call on Him and ask Him to save me, He'd save me. And there's a time in my life when I know that I've trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I know that He has saved me. I know I have eternal life. Would you slip your hand up as a testimony and say, Pastor, that's me today. I know that I'm saved. All right, you may put it down. Is there somebody here today who would say, Pastor, I don't know that for sure. I do not know that if I died, I'd go to heaven. I don't know there's ever been a time when I asked Christ to be my Savior. But Pastor, I appreciate you praying for me. I am concerned about it. Would you slip your hand up and put it back down right now and just say, Pastor, pray for me today? Is there someone like that? You couldn't raise it the first hand, but you'll raise it now. Could I pray for you today? I'll not embarrass you. We'll not call you out, but I will pray for you. Is there someone like that? All right. The message was to believers. Is Christ living in you? Have you put off and put on? How do you know? Well, is the peace of God ruling in your heart? Is the word of Christ dwelling in you richly? Do you take the name of Christ everywhere you go? Yeah. I wonder how many believers here this morning could say, Pastor, the Spirit of God spoke in my heart today. And I appreciate you praying for me this morning. Would you slip your hand up, Christian? Amen. 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 God bless you. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. If God has spoken to your heart. I want you to respond to Him this morning. He's spoken to you. You respond to Him. You'll never get in trouble by saying yes to God. You only ever get in trouble when you begin to say no. Just always say yes when He tells you what, what He wants you to do. And you respond to him and the altar is open for you to do business with God this morning. If you've never received Christ as your Savior while others are coming to pray, slip out from your seat. Come down to the front. We have people who will be here. They've been trained. They'll take a Bible and they'll show you from the Bible how you can know you're on your way to heaven. If you're saved, you've never been scripturally baptized, you ought to come and say, Pastor, I need to be baptized. If you're saved and you're baptized and this is where you feel like God would have you belong and to serve, and you come. Whatever it is that God's dealt with your heart about, just respond to Him. Do what He's telling you to do. Father, thank You for speaking to hearts today. I pray Your will will be done in each heart and life. In these next few moments, Lord, just hear our prayer as we bow the knee to You. Thank You for dealing with each of us this morning. Now may Your will be done in every heart and life. And I'll thank You for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Brother Bob's going to sing. God has spoken to your heart. Respond to him this morning, will you? Once far from God right. and dead in That's sin, right. no light my heart could see. But in God's word, the light I found 
Now Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Oh, what a salvation this, that Christ liveth in me. As rays of light from yonder sun, the flowers of her set free. So life and light and love came forth from Christ living in me. Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Oh, what a salvation this, that Christ liveth in me. As lives with flower within the seed, as in the cone, the tree, so praise the God of truth and grace, his spirit dwelleth in me. Christ liveth in me, Christ liveth in me. Oh, what a salvation this, that Christ liveth in me. With longing all my heart is filled, that like him I may be. As on the wondrous thought I dwell, that Christ liveth in me. Sing it with him. Christ liveth in me. Christ liveth in me. Oh, what a salvation this, that Christ liveth. Christ liveth in me, Christ liveth in me, oh, what a salvation this, that Christ liveth in me. What a salvation is this, Lord, that Christ lives in Thank the Lord that the life that we now live in the flesh were to live by the faith of the Son of God, loved me and gave himself for me. Lord, I pray that each of us would live lives yielded to Christ today, putting off the old and putting on the new man, allowing the peace of God to rule in our heart, the word of Christ to dwell in our heart, the name of Christ to go with us everywhere we go. We love you, Lord. Thank you for each one that's here this morning. Thank you for meeting with us and for decisions that have been made for you. I pray it will impact our lives both now and for eternity. Lord, give us a good afternoon now. Dismiss us with your blessing and bring us back this evening for the evening service. We pray it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. All right. We're going to sing, I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Brother Bob. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by his blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm a part of the family, the family of God. Amen. You're dismissed. We'll see you tonight.